Hello, hello. Hi, welcome. Just gonna let everyone get in and then we will start. Yes. All right. <clears throat> hello, hello. <laughs> All right, I think we'll go ahead and get going. Um, I'm Suzanne Nielsen and Laura Cameron is also with us. We're your hosts for today. This is the second part of, um, uh, we're doing little tutorials on this pop and lock cowl. Um, and it covers um, the I-cord edge and mosaic knitting, which we kind of did last week. And I'll, I'll do a little bit of a summary on that. Um, and, color choice. We covered that last week too. We talked a little bit more about color choice. And today we're going to also do um, the bind off. It's just a, a three stitch I-cord bind off and mattress stitch. Um, and like always, um, we're recording these. So, you know, you can go back and watch them later. Um, but also please feel free to um, ask questions and put them in the chat and we'll get to those. And then Laura will tell us about uh, what she gets to give away too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thanks to Zen Garden, Zen Yarn Garden, who is sponsoring our Tuesday tutorial. This is the 49th tutorial. Tutorial Tuesday, tongue twister. And tonight we'll give away two $20 gift certificates. So um, we will let you know when it is time to open your chat. I'll have some trivia questions that you will be able to answer if you're following along. And those uh, gift certificates are, um, it'll be a $20 gift certificate to the shop. You can use those for anything um, and you can use them on top of discounts and whatnot. There is no code for tonight, but I will let you know that our Black Friday Cyber Monday sale continues. That is 30% off. Just add items to your cart and check out and you will see the discount there. So tonight's tutorial is going to be on the pop and lock cowl by um, Lisa K. Ross, who is a paper daisy, I believe. Um, let me go back. Lisa K. Ross, um, paper daisy creations. I'm putting that um, in the chat right now. Um, just a moment. And then we have kits that are available for this. Um, they are in our midnight colorway and then a speckle colorway called the Pop Rocks. Last week we talked about how to choose your colors. Um, and that kit is available this evening. The other thing is that if you do not um, like the Pop Rocks colorway and you would like to choose something else, we also have other mini skeins available and you can choose your mini skein. Um, and I'm gonna put that link in the chat as well. Um, and the final link that I will put in the chat is um, we do tutorial Tuesdays, um, at, uh, many Tuesdays, and then we put them up on our YouTube channel. If you missed last week and you want to catch up, you can find um, last week's tutorial on our YouTube channel. So that was a lot that I just put into chat, um, but that will uh, get you ready with all the links and whatnot, and uh, we will get started. Yay. All right, so I knit up a little sample. Remember last week um, I showed you on my, um, just a sample of basic mosaic knitting, but I went ahead and knit a little, um, let me share my screen here, a little sample that's the same size and kind of shape uh, as this shawl. Um, and so here's the, I'll show you a little piece of the pattern. Um, just a schematic of um, of how it's knit. Um, you cast on here, so that's uh, this cast on, and then you knit in this direction doing an increase. So I'm knitting this way and I have an increase edge. And at some point you stop doing the increase and you just knit straight. Um, and so that is here. So we can even just line this up. Um, on the um, schematic. And then this section um, here is where the mosaic comes in. And I've started doing a little bit of it. I'll do one more row with you here. Um, then we'll bind off and then um, we're going to seam this cast on edge, um, as it says in the pattern, we'll seam this cast on edge um, to this straight edge. So to this straight edge right here on my knitting. And you do want your, um, cast on edge to be the same length as your straight edge um, up here. And she talks a lot about that in the pattern. 
um, mainly you keep those lengths the same through your blocking at the end. Um, but all right, so I did want to clarify a little bit of how to carry your yarn up inside the I cord. Um, it's a really nice way to hide your ends. And um, it's easy to hide your ends in an I cord just by using your darning needle to um, feed your yarn through the middle of the I cord. But you can also, as you're working along, you can hide both your tail um, from, from when you start with the new color. You, I could have hid my original tail too, but I've saved this tail in case I need it in the bind off. Um, but I could have I could have hid that as I went also. Um, and then I'm hiding, um, I'm keeping the two different colors connected and and hiding those tails in the I-cord as I go. So you can see um, I didn't cut my yarn and my ends are already woven in when I switched between, which is really fabulous. <laughs> Um, but there's just a couple little tricks. Um, so I'm going to show that right now. So right now I just finished knitting with the orange um, mosaic knitting. So you'll see I, I had to slip some of the stitches. So I have some of the other color, but I was using orange. And now I want to start knitting with um, with the next color. So <clears throat> when when you're doing that, um, in the pattern, she just describes as making sure that you're working yarn um, comes underneath your stitches and that kind of works for the tail. So I kind of want this tail to continue up the inside of the I cord. So I bring this one over. But when when you have just finished off with another color, then this color is left um, kind of hanging out there. And um, the way I like to do it is to still make sure that this color that I'm going to start using, the main color, comes underneath um, and then kind of pulls it in. So I pretend that everything that I want to keep inside the I cord is kind of coming straight up here and that the, the yarn that I'm working with um, is going to come underneath, underneath all of that and kind of pull those in. So you can see here, this is the the strand that's coming from the last, um, you slip the, the three stitches on the end there. So it's it's coming around. So you do have to, um, to, to you know, keep things tidy. You do have to untwist your, your um, yarn um, as you, I always just do it when I start, I kind of throw this one around. Um, but anyway, so this, so the yarns kind of, if you just keep them, think about them coming up inside your I cord and the, and coming behind everything um, that will keep things neat and tidy. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do just my little mini version. Um, and I'll show you again the uh, the knitting and slipping with how the chart is. Um, so I'm just kind of working one repeat or a little bit of a modified repeat um, from what she has in the chart. But you'll see in general, most of the time you only have one slip stitch. So these V's represent the slip stitch. Um, the pattern's written out too. So if you don't want to read the chart, you don't have to do that. But um, there are times where she has you slipping three stitches in a row. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit and clarify it, but um, the edge stitches are always the I cord, just maintained um, I cord with knit. And then we get into um, the, um, the pattern. So I had just regular knit two and then a slip one. And then I have knit three. So I'm just working along. I'm not really paying attention to how I'm not pulling terribly tight. If you're a tight knitter, then you're going to have to watch yourself and not not pull very tight. Um, but in general, I'm not I'm not letting that like slow me down a whole lot. <laughs> um, so then I have a slip one and then knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Slip one, knit three. Slip one and end with knitting two. All right, and then we have our I cord here, which is just um, slipping these three stitches. But first I have to bring my yarn to the front and then slip those three stitches. 
All right, turn the work. And now um, the wrong sides um, are always just rest rows. <laughs> That's what I call them, um, because we're just doing the same thing that we did on the previous row, except that we do have to purl. But we're going to purl the colors that we see, except for the edge. So we'll knit three. Um, and then bring the yarn to the front to purl. If I see the stitch that's the color that I'm working with, I'm going to purl it. And if I see the opposite color, I am going to slip it. Sorry, I think my camera is not quite keeping up with my words. No, here. it looks it looks okay from here. It's okay. Okay, good. Um, so knit or purl three, slip one, purl. Okay, so like I said, this is recorded. This is really just a refresh of last week's, um, but I wanted to show you on my little sample. Um, all right, and then the last three again, we're just going to slip. And um, then Mosaic takes a little while to start like seeing actually what's going on, but um, you're starting to see See that it looks pretty looks pretty good um <clears throat> and in the pattern um this it, after after you do the mosaic you do another couple rows of like this type of design um but for this demo purposes um i'm just going to go into um, our i cord bind off then we'll take a break for gift cards um in this i cord bind off um, she doesn't have you uh, do any, here, this is how I'm going to, um, so I'm making sure that my tails come up and bring my working yarn underneath everything. So I have to wrap it around there. And now the working yarn is coming underneath all of the, the tails that I want to hide. Um, <clears throat> and I could cut those off actually, but um, so for the I cord bind off this corner, um, so from this going from this straight edge of I cord to an I cord bind off, um, sometimes depends on the on the pattern. You might want to knit just an I cord stitches a little bit to kind of get you around the corner. Um, but in this case, she doesn't instruct you to do that, and I think that's just because this is kind of a this is the corner of the um, of the piece um, that's going to be like the triangle in the front of the cowl. It doesn't really need to be like a super super sharp, crisp corner, and it's easy to block that. So um, it, it's just knit two and then SSK. So knit two, and then I'll show you my trick for SSK. So normally SSK is just slip slip. Then you place those stitches back and knit them together through the back loop. And then you place all the ones, all the stitches back. So next time I do the SSK, I will show you my trick. Um, and that is knit two and then SSK. Instead of doing the slip slip, you can go into this stitch knit wise and then into the back of the next stitch and knit those two together. It just saves you the time of doing that slip slip and it comes out, it looks exactly the same. Um, all right, so I think um, we'll take a little, I'll, well, here, let me show you a couple more times. And even though I am in the middle of the mosaic knitting, um, actually look at this, let's talk about that. So I, it is a little bit of a cheat because I'm not slipping um, that second stitch. And so you see that it does look twisted here. So I might need to take back my words here. <laughs> and in that case, I'll do the slip slip and see how it's different. Most of the time that stitch gets hidden by the I cord and it doesn't make a difference. But because that was a slip stitch, um, it pulled long. Um, so. I, I don't think that's going to be necessary because you will end with a couple, at least one or two plain rows before yeah. you start your I cord. Yeah. So in this case, it would be just the blue on blue. There wouldn't be a row where you had just slipped something because mm -hmm. you're going to finish with, I think, a couple garter rows right. before you start the bind off. Right. 
So, well, you did it here so that it would be less noticeable. And to be honest, once the I chord comes across, I'm not even sure it would have been noticeable. Yeah, you won't see it. But I think you would have seen that twist in this long stitch right here. But yeah, like I said, most people wouldn't notice. Um, all right, I'm going to take this, let's see, off here. And we'll pause and do the giveaways while I finish this bind off. And then we'll go back to um, seeing. <laughs> sure. Okay, so open your chat window, and um, I think we did that. At, well, we both did that at the same time. Okay, so open your chat window, and um, I am going to ask two trivia questions. For the first one, I'm going to pick winner number three, and I will say you can't win both. So if you win the first one, you can enter the second one, but you won't be able to win. Um, so my first question is, who is the designer of the pop and lock pattern? Ooh. Okay. Um, my third person with the correct answer is Liz K. Liz, go ahead and message Roxanne. She is under Zen Yarn Garden and she is in the chat and she will get you your gift card. Okay, so my second um, question, what is one of the techniques that we have demonstrated in this project? <laughs> Okay, my third correct answer is Sherry Ham, I cord bind off. That is one of the things we've demonstrated tonight. So Sherry, go ahead and um, message Roxanne and she will get you your gift card. So I'll just vamp a little bit more um, while, uh, okay. while Suzanne uh, continues binding off. Let me show you, hold on just a minute. Um, let me show you what our next, um, we are, our next upcoming event will be a knit along and that is for the Zen Zip Tea, which is a new pattern from Suzanne. Let me share my screen. I just wanted to get that open. Um, it is a cute tea pattern that uses our fingering weight yarn. And um, we use that uh, along with um, a kit of minis to create a really cute tea. Um, and so it has got a variety of uh, shaping and modifications, so you can make it so it will fit you. You take your own bust, you take your own waist measurement, you take your own length, um, and it is kind of a recipe of a pattern where then you take those numbers and you um, do a little bit of math with some gauge and some other things, and then you create a T pattern. So the T is worked in our super fine fingering, and it is a mini kit, which is three 100 yard skeins and then um, you'll just use for you'll use a neutral color for your um, main color we have done that in natural and I can't remember if we've put any other color in there um, we put midnight in there so you can go natural kind of on the white side or you can go on the dark side and then um, with black and then we've got a whole bunch of different minis um, that come together in kits and these kits are somewhat color coordinated so that you can knit yours I actually have one of these the diving goggles um, that is the kit that I'm going to use and um, you can choose those and then we will have a um, a knit along which will be three private sessions by zoom we're meeting on Sunday evenings there will be one in December and then two in January so if you are interested in that let me get you a link and put that in here that is what we'll be working on I know we will also have some other um some other projects that we'll be covering in the upcoming weeks during December. So the yes. Zen Zip Tea, you can- And the next, it. I think next week we have a Tutorial Tuesday too. Do That's we? the free Tutorial Tuesday on the um, the Mobius. Um, oh, it's a new Mobius okay. pattern. And yes. so that's- So let me too. grab the, um, maybe Roxanne will add a, um, a link for that. Sherry, um, what you want to do is send it in chat to Zen Yarn Garden. Mm -hmm. So um, in your chat window, if you just select Zen Yarn Garden from the to button, then you can go ahead and send her your email address and she will send you um, your yes. price. And the Zen Zip Tea is knit side to side. Um, yep. It's got just a tiny bit of seaming at the, the shoulders, um, but the rest is all one piece uh, knit side to side. Yes, and we are meeting next Tuesday. Um, we'll be meeting doing uh, Skipping on Cloud Nine, which is a pattern by uh, Suzanne again. And it is a fun Mobius scarf that she knit up in a um, Lux cake. 
the last. Uh oh, look at that. I'm going to switch back here. I'm that. done binding off. Um, um, and we'll get the link sorted out. Yeah, um, let me see. But all right, so I'm I have one more stitch. So she does have you um go all the way across. Um yeah, I'm not gonna get into that. We could you could have done something a little different, but <laughs> um I'll I'll show you also what I you know just defaulted to in my my cheating ways is I was just knitting two. And then instead of even doing an SSK or my fancy SSK, I just knit two together through the back loop. And I don't even think you can see where I started or stopped doing it um, the right way versus the faster, easier way. <laughs> um, but you can see when I had those long stitches um, that these this one I didn't twist it the right way and so that one you can see it is a little bit twisted um, but I don't think many people would notice that so anyway uh just just some interesting facts here at the end she has you just um knit three stitches together um because these are going to be part of that seam so I think that's why it doesn't matter too much um knit those three together and cut your yarn and pull it out and we'll use this part um, for the tail. All right, so now if you, uh, sorry, if you, if this were your actual piece, you would block this first. So it's a really easy piece to block because you have all these I chords. Um, so you can use pins in your I cord, you can use um, blocking wires and feed them through the I cords um, and get it to all block out nicely. Um, she does say block this um, cast on edge to the same length as your um, straight edge over here. Um, so, but what we're going to do is we take our cast on edge and match it up with our um, straight edge with the right sides facing or the right sides the, the right sides are gonna like come together like this all right mm -hmm. so now there's a couple different ways um, she does use mattress stitch the designer Lisa also has um, a YouTube video on how she does this. So I'm going to show you how I would do it. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, any any way is is correct <laughs> um, or viable. Um, well, and there there are links in the pattern to her tutorial. So if you decide you want to see her do it, that right. is that is <laughs> viable as well. Yes. Everything works, but I thought may as well show you something different or at least discuss it. Um, so um, what what the designer does, what Lisa Ross does is um, she measures um, like the halfway point and puts markers on either side um, and to kind of help things line up. Um, so I think that's a really good way. Um, but sometimes what I like to do is I actually use my locking stitch markers, and I just pin it together how I want it to be. Now, I will say what makes this challenging here is that you are you are seaming up two little sections that almost look like they don't go together because the knitting is in the opposite direction. So on one side, you basically have a vertical I cord, and then on the other side, you sort of have your perpendicular cast on edge. And so you are seaming knitting in two different directions together. Now, I will right. say that no matter what method you use, this is going to be the little bit of the cowl that is at the back of your neck, most likely under your hair or behind your coat. So it's not going to be something that everybody's going to see. But that's also why we did choose to talk about this today, because there are some methods that can make it a little bit easier so that um you can so that it looks nice. Looks nicer. Yeah. All right. So I just um so these two I cords kind of come together. Um, so that's why I stuck my stitch marker that's linking everything together right above those two IO cords. So those can kind of line up. Um, and then at the edge of my knit, I am linking it here. Um, and I'll put another one in the middle. 
Um, and of course, mine is a bit shorter because this is just like a little, little tiny sample. Um, so you'll have a little bit more to deal with. You'll need more markers or more like points along your um, time to help you gauge. But basically, if you give yourself that kind of a, um, a guide, it makes it a little bit easier. And then you don't finish and say, oh my gosh, I really like misjudged. And now I have way more here. You'll know by the time you get like to your first marker, your second, third, fourth, however many markers, um, it, you'll know if you need to adjust or take it out and try it again. Um, the biggest thing that I'm going to mention that the designer did that I'm going to do differently here just to be different, just to give you, you know, different ideas so that you can choose how you want is um, that she seems so that like on top of this I chord. So in the little section that she seems her I chord disappears and it goes to the inside. Um, but I, I kind of like I chord. I think I chord looks nice. Um, so I am going to, mine is going to look a little bit more like the I chord on top of the, um, on top of the cast on, because the cast on is just a, you know, regular cast on, nothing, nothing special there. Um, but, and then in, in the video tutorial, in the pattern, she shows you um, how to do it if you hide that I chord. Um, so starting out, um, you'll have, she has you just knit three together. And so you have this kind of end here on your I chord. So I'm just gonna come into this I chord and find like, find the V and, um, and go into that. And then back into this I chord, really just kind of through the middle of the I chord, just to make, and then I'm going to come back over here again, just to make it um, kind of line up. All right, so now um, what we're going to do is take kind of two bars or, or some amount from over here, and then come back over here. Um, with a mattress stitch. But like I said, I like to see this. I want to see this I chord. So I'm going to come, I'm going to look kind of to the inside of the I chord um, instead of on top of the I chord um, like the designer does. So I'm going to kind of twist a little bit and just come and find the stitches um, of the I chord down here. Um, all right. So I will find two bars. Let's see. Sorry, I don't know if you can see this very well. Um, from between the stitches. So I found this is here. You can see that turquoise bar and then a um, an orange one. So I found those two bars that are in between the I chord row stitches and go pull through them. We don't have to pull tight yet. Um, and then I come to this side and I'm gonna just gonna kind of judge, okay, it took about that much, so I need about that much. I'm gonna ignore the, the cast on edge and I'm gonna take the, the Vs here. I'm actually gonna go two because that's about how much um, it was over there and pull and then we're going to come back over here now i can kind of um, make sure that things are lined up where i pinned them together and find two more bars i went right under my um, stitch marker i'm just kind of ignoring my stitch marker at this point <laughs> and come back over here and find i'm going to go under to maybe two and a half. Um, and then come back and find two more bars. And two more over here. So that's the, the mattress stitch. When you come over to this side and you go through two, and then you go back, you're kind of staying on the top of your work and going through under two um, and back and forth that way. And the, the magic of that, this stitch, okay, I'll do this last final one. I just went under one bar there. Um, I'm going to take these out 
And then I'll pull and show you how it kind of hides itself and just zips everything together nice. All right, so now if I, you can see where I went back and forth. This is my strand going back and forth. Um, and if I pull those like fall away and it's just pulling my I cord like right over, over the top. Um, and I'll kind of adjust a little, um, but looks nice. I think I pulled a little bit too much down here, but um, <clears throat> so that is another way to do that where I kept kind of this I cord on top and um, going over. You could even exaggerate more than I did and, and roll your I cord and take like the back of your I cord. Um, and then on the back um, here, looks nice too. Um, so really mattress stitch is one of that is really easy to take out too. If I had decided I didn't like that, I could just kind of start at the top and pull this apart and find that and just take it out, undo it and and follow my way down. If I just kind of pull apart, um, I see these strands going back and forth and I could just take it out and start over. Um, but for this sample, I think that's, that is the gist of it. I don't know what I can use this little guy for. Maybe a wine bottle topper or something. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I think. <laughs> All right, any, any questions? Um, we're back out here. Any any questions or things they want to see or talk about um, again for this one? Um, see if not, we'll have we'll be here back next Tuesday for Mobius um, and some little tricks for the for the skipping on cloud nine pattern. And then we'll be here for um, the Zen Zip T. So I hope you'll join us for that. And. Um, and I just got a list of samples, so I'll have plenty of new things for us in the new year. And okay. I've already sent a few things. Yes, off Laura knit this for... one too. The she said it was really fast, right? It's like a mm -hmm. maybe you yeah. could even get it done for a Christmas present. So <laughs> yeah, you might be able to. <laughs> it was so, fun. It was you know just a little sample is neat. Um, and don't forget, um, there still is a Black Friday Cyber Monday sale. Um, and it extends, I believe, through tonight, and it is 30% off um, of anything that you put in your cart. So there is no coupon code, just use that. And uh, that is generously provided by Zen Yarn Garden, who sponsors all our Tutorial Tuesdays. Yay, thank you. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week. Yay.